Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, now you can see why I took the weekend off and what I've been doing. We're going to start a week-long uh, tutorial. Uh, definitely can't be done in one way. We're going to examine the entire 150 Prismacolor box. Everybody's got to learn what the pencils do and what they're for. And this is what I was working on um, all weekend. <laughs> it was tough. It came from Joanna Bassfidge, Joanna's Christmas. I love this page. This was actually a lot of fun to do. And I recommend it to everybody of every uh, level of coloring. Uh, you can have a lot of fun. And if you're going to learn about colored pencils, this is the one for you. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the 150 pencil box by Prismacolor. That's all the pencils. If you get that set, you got them all. But they also sell smaller sets, and the Prismacolor company has worked hard in putting together pencils that go well together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down some of those groupings and tell you about some uh, some of the individual pencils uh, that have actually dual purposes and you can do more than one thing with. When I first started out, there was nothing like this. I had to learn this stuff all on my own. And not everything is included in the groupings that Prismacolor uh, included. So I'm going to show you my um, the way I look at the colors. And I, hopefully it'll be... Good for you. You'll learn. You'll be able to start melding in your head what colors you could put with other things. We're going to start with some of my favorite pencils, and those are the neons. In the Prismacolor 150 set, you have three actual neon colors. And that's the orange, pink, and yellow. A lot of people believe it or not, have said to me, um, I don't use the neons or they don't know what the neons are for or the neons intimidate them. These are some of my favorite pencils to use in everything from portraits to uh, works like this, candy art to landscaping. The neon pencils actually bring out a highlight in other pencils and that's basically what they're for is to bring out that highlight and when mixed with other colors it really gives things a pop um there are two other pencils that are not labeled as neon but they could basically be classified as doing the same and then you you have your true green and they used to i believe have a non uh a neon blue, but they changed it to the non-photo blue. Non-photo blue actually has two purposes. Um, if you're doing any sort of graphic work that involves print, this does not copy. So a lot of people who are in the industry use non-photo blue to make corrections on things, and then those corrections are not seen when they go to print the the page. So it's a it's a great dual pencil, you know, dual function pencil. On the color side, um, it's very close to what would be considered a neon blue. It reacts like a neon blue, and it's it's actually a very beautiful color when mixed with other blues. Alone, it's very pretty. Neon orange, pink, and yellow. Then there is the true green. True green also has two, two purposes. One, it's, it's the pencil you use if you're going to do any sort of camera tricks that involve chroma key. Um, you color with the green, you turn your chroma key on, and that green disappears. And anything that you put underneath that video comes right through. So it is a really fun um pencil to use. I'm going to demonstrate it on, on this page for you um, just for a few seconds so you see what I'm talking about. Three of my favorite pencil combinations when it comes to the neons, 
and they are very much my go-to colors for each one. We've got cobalt blue matching up with uh, the non-photo. We've got goldenrod and the yellow, pale vermilion with the orange. Now, I, I like two different colors, Process Red or the Crimson Lake with the pink. I use both of them. Now, my color combinations, of course, are not exclusive. I use hundreds of combinations, but this is some of my favorites. And then with the True Green, I matched up with a dark green. Each one of these does sort of the same thing and I'm going to demo it now and so that you see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have I'm going to use the non-photo and the blue on here. So, say I'm going to do this candy down here. Okay? I'm going to use the non-photo I've left a line in there for my light line or my highlight. I'm going to take this blue, the cobalt, and I'm going to get the edge. I'm going to mix it in. Now, of course, I'm working on a very small space. This looks way better on a bigger space. Now, I'm going to zoom in, of course, on this view. Look how it gets like a bright spot, something lit up. And that's what you get when using your neon colors. It lights up and it works for all of these. Here I used it. I used the pink combination over here. And look at how the pink just comes to life. when mixed with the crimson, the processed red, or even um, the Crimson Lake. And you can see really gets bright, almost like satin shiny. So there are some of the examples of things you could do with the neons. It works on any object that you're going to be coloring and if you've never used your neons, go out and try them. They're a lot of fun. Neon yellow could be found at the back. They don't, when they, they're going in the progression on the Prismacolor site, they don't include the neon yellow. They leave the neon yellow with the neon at the, at the very end. Here are your yellow and your yellowish orange colors. The first four pencils are a little bit different. You've got cream eggshell artichoke and ginger wood now if we take these other pencils away and we're just going to start with the first four colors the artichoke is a little bit weird and out of sorts where you would think it went somewhere else in the pencil with the pencils but when you're coloring with it you'll understand why it it works very well being um, left with these colors at the beginning of the set. It also, <laughs> it's, it's kind of good because it sticks out like a, a sore thumb and you don't sort of lose it. Now I've mentioned many times that artichoke is one of my go-to colors and it really is. And I would call this the mid-range color or the towards the darker color. And we'll take um this candy here you see when you're coloring it although the outside of the pencil is very dark it's got a very yellow green earthy feel these are more earthy colors they're more in the mossy family or how you would think mossy now you got your ginger root and something. 
Now, if you mix in your ginger root into this, you can see how it blends really nicely. You can almost, you can, not almost, but you can actually see where it is the next color in line. So when you're using your pencils and you want a really good blend, those two pencils are really good next to each other. As a highlight or um, the pencil that you can blend with, you go back to your um, eggshell or your cream. They're both the lighter shades. And you can see it blends right in, kind of forming a natural progression of color. And then your darker, bringing in your darker. Another color that I would use with that to really bring it out on the greens, I would use a dark green. I think I have it here. Make sure you keep enough space open for a highlight. And there you go. Perfect pencil combination. Next on the Prismacolor list are your yellow, up until your yellow oranges. A couple of the pencils in this category are really my our go-to pencils for me and I've said it before I do not live without my goldenrod and what I love about goldenrod is that it's got a mixture of the yellow with the orange but it's more of an earthy color it's um, like a, a darker wheat color as opposed to something where you have a yellow orange pencil here and this is um well, yellow and orange where this has a much brighter sun feel so I would actually consider these the two opposites they're both the yellow oranges but one is earth and one is uh sun just to give you a what we would use as a demo on here and let's see we'll pick over here I'm going to use the goldenrod for my darker color. But I want to make this candy sparkle and shine in a bright yellow. I would go straight to my cannery yellow, which is another one of my favorite. And that's right here. I actually buy this pencil by the dozen. A friend of mine bought me my first dozen and I ripped through them. So here's your, your blend. So it kind of looks like a golden wheat with the sun coming down on it. So it is definitely one of my favorites. Pair that with a um, darker orange, we'll say, uh, let me see, my darker orange is a Spanish orange. There's a Spanish orange. And then for a drop, the Spanish orange mixed with the Crimson Lake. Ooh, good stuff. Take a look how pretty that is. Add in a tiny pop. Um, this candy is going uh, this way. Okay, so we have a tiny bit here. And there we have it. A nice shiny golden candy. And that of course works with every object that you try. 
I wanted to talk to you about your umbers. There is no color for umber. And I know that you see umber light and dark in your set. They group together umbers to include the siennas and the okras. Umbers, where they're calling the pencils umbers, they go from red to brown. They give you two pencils. They give you a light umber and a dark umber. And if you notice something about these pencils, and these are the okras, the siennas, and the um, umbers. There's a light and a dark umber. Then there's three okras. You've got your, your green, you've got your burnt, and you have your yellow. And these are your okras. But there are more okras out there. And there's a purple okra. And the equivalent in the 150 set is your Parma Violet. That's probably the closest uh, that I found and really can be grouped in with the okras. And I know that's kind of a weird thing, but that's just, they give you other sets, like companies will actually give you purple okra. So just know that's Parma Violet. Another yellow I wanted to talk about is the Deco Yellow. And the Deco Yellow is part of a different group, the Deco Colors, and that's a palette from a palette from the 1930s um, where you see the Deco art. Um, they're bright colors. They're not re really related per se to each other as far as blending, but they look great together as far as pops of color go. You could see it's a very pale yellow, but when mixed with some of the browns, um, I'm going to get actually out, I'm going to demo it with artichoke because I know that that's really a nice combination. You can pair that, that combination with almost anything. If you look on your color, your color charts, you might not think of it, but your Palma Violet looks really nice with that. Kind of like a lemon grape candy. I almost forgot before we move on to the next group of colors. Here is an orange, uh, yellow combination that I, um, I use quite often for fruit. I start off with a crimson lake or one of the darker reds. I move on to the neon orange, which is right up against, so I get a nice quality pop. Cannery yellow. And then I use a gradation, a bottom color of cannery yellow. Then on top, I use my um, orange which is just plain old orange gradating down to um, a, a little bit of the cannery yellow. And then I mix in some Posca for a little white pop. So that's how I did this one. And this is one of my favorite ones. Okay, I've taken you guys past the 20 minute mark. Uh, after that, it gets a little bit wonky getting it to upload. I don't want to have any trouble. I've taken you up to the yellows in the box and we're going to move on from there. I'm going to take you through the entire box and then I'm going to do a final on this picture for you guys. Uh, a lot of these are not complete, so don't, please don't be looking and going, oh, you could have, you know, blended that better. I know that I'm leaving. I left a lot of this for the end of the end video on this page where I'm, I'm planning a couple of things on there that you're not expecting. So I will see you guys tomorrow and we will continue through the box. Take care. See more? Hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell.